Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I'm going to discuss is what happens when we change a load from a Y connection in a three phase to a delta connection in a three phase, and we'll look at the observable changes in there as well. So first thing I want to point out, we have a Y connected load over here with 10 ohms of impedance per branch. Now I say impedance, this is a purely resistive load or a unity power factor, which means that impedance is equal to resistance in this load. We're going to continue that over to the delta when we reconnect it as well, just for simplicity. So first thing we have a 208 volt supply. So we want to plot this right here. We're going to say that our voltage of our line, 208 volts. If I was to take a voltmeter and apply, well, first of all, if we apply our voltage, I would have 208 volts line to line, which gives us our 208 volts line voltage. Now, three phase with a Y connection, we know that line voltage is root three larger than phase voltage. So if we transpose that equation, we know that voltage of the phase is equal to 208 volts divided by root three, which gives us 120 volts per phase. Okay, so with 120 volts per phase, and 10 ohms of impedance per phase, what we can now calculate is the phase current. So I phase is equal to phase voltage of 120 volts divided by phase impedance, in this case of 10 ohms. I phase is equal to 12 amps. Okay. Now, Y connected circuits, if I have 12 amps on this phase, that also means that I have 12 amps on that line. There's nowhere else for it to split off. My line current is equal to my phase current. So we can say I line equals I phase equals 12 amps. Okay? So last thing we're going to do is calculate the power dissipated by this Y connected load. We're going to use our formula power total. Well, let's go power phase first. Power of one phase is equal to the current through that phase squared. So I phase squared times the resistance of that phase. Okay, in this case, we have 12 squared times 10 ohms should give us around 1440 watts per phase. And because this is a balanced load, I can simply take the watts per phase and multiply it by three to get total power dissipated. So power total equals power of the phase, sorry, power of the phase times three, we should get total power dissipated of around 4,320 watts. And that's connected in Y. Now, things will change when we take this and flip it over to a delta configuration. The only thing that won't change is the physical impedance of the phase. That's a property of whatever this is, okay? So, when we look, we still have a 208 volt supply. And what we know about a delta connection is that my line voltage is equal to my phase voltage. If I apply 208 volts, it's like taking 208 volts right across the phase. So we know that our phase voltage, our uh, voltage of the phase equals 208 volts. Voltage of our line equals 208 volts. Okay, and we're going to do the same calculation. We're going to go I phase first. Let's find I phase is equal to the voltage of the phase, which is 208 volts, divided by the impedance of the phase, which is 10 ohms. 208 volts divided by 10 ohms gives us, well, let's do a prediction here. If my voltage is root 3 bigger than it was connected in Y, means that I should, according to Ohm's law, have root three bigger current, 20.8 amps. Okay, that works out. Now, to find line current, what we know when we're dealing with a balanced delta connected circuit is this, I line equals I phase times root three. In this case, we have 20.8 amps times root three equals, we should see somewhere around 36.02 amps, or a root three larger current than we saw previously. Or sorry, in our, we see a root three larger current 
in our line than we did in our phase. And it actually ends up being three times the size of the current, roughly 12, 36, somewhere around there, okay, than it was originally in a Y-connected circuit. So the last thing we're going to do with our delta circuit, we're going to figure out what our power total dissipated by this load is when it's connected for in delta. Okay, so same formulas. We're going to look at, we have power of the phase equals, we have the current through the phase, which in this case is 20.8 squared times the impedance of the phase, which didn't change. 10 ohms. Power of the phase is now equal to 4326, or essentially equivalent to what we had for our total power dissipated uh, when we were connected in Y. Now remember, this is just per phase, and if we wanted to find power total, again in a balanced load, I can take that and multiply it by 3. So we go 4326 times 3, power total, we end up with somewhere around 12,979 watts-ish. Depending on rounding, you might end up with a slightly different number, okay? but it should be somewhere close to that. What we really notice is the power dissipated when it's connected in delta is three times larger than it was when it was connected in Y. If you ever want to check this formula, easiest way to do it, in this case because it's a unity load, I know that apparent power is equal to true power. In that case, I can use this formula. We have our, uh, where do we want to write it? Let's go right here. Uh, S total equals E line times I line times root 3. In this case, E line is 208 volts. I line, we calculated out, was, where was it? 36.02 amps times root 3. It should work out roughly around that number. Again, different formulas yield slightly different results, but it should be fairly close. Hopefully this has helped. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.